Well, you're very welcome to Tip GAA TV. This is another big week for all Tipperary supporters and All-Ireland Final is on the horizon. I'm Stephen Gleeson and I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined by John Ryan, the manager of the Tipperary Camogie Under-16 team and Siobhan Ryan, coach and selector with the Under-16s. You have an All-Ireland Final to look forward to. You're very welcome to Tip GAA, John and Siobhan. Thank you, Stephen. We're delighted to be here. Thanks, and uh, we'll start with you, John. This is a fantastic time. You took over the reins as a Tipperary under-16 Camogie team manager. And uh, last weekend, you had a fantastic win against Galway in the All-Ireland semi-final. And uh, it must have been just real excitement at that full-time whistle for you. It's it's always great to, to, to win a game, Stephen, but particular to win a game and get into an All Ireland final, there is a there is a buzz around it. It is a, a special time, and especially for those young girls, um, it's a great time in their life. It's probably a lot of their their first All Ireland, um, and it, it's it's a buzz, and it creates a buzz, and there's energy about them, and there's en- they, we we get energy from them as well. But yeah, it was super, and it's a super game. Uh, we, we were a bit under the cosh at half time, you know, playing with with the. Uh, with a bit of a wind and being down a point at half time, we we were under a little bit of pressure, but we always knew that there was strength in this panel and strength in the girls and there was character there. And you know, they dug deep. They they did what was asked of them, um, they made a few substitutions and um they, they worked and we got our win and, and it's fantastic and it's a great feeling and we're delighted to be there. Brilliant stuff. And uh, Siobhan Ryan, you're very delighted. I'm delighted to welcome you to this uh, uh, Tip GAA TV show here. And like you went in with John and that backroom team, you had to go through the entire county to find a set of girls that would, you know, play to the best of their ability and get to an All-Ireland final. And now after so much months and so much work, you're there. Tell us a little about the, the journey to getting to an All-Ireland final. Yeah, it was, it's been a fantastic journey so far, ups and downs along the way. But I suppose the journey really started back at the very start of the year when the management met together. So John made the phone calls and, and uh, uh, persuaded us to come on board. I didn't need much persuasion. It was a huge honour to be involved with uh, the top under-16 team in the county. And um, it was, I suppose we started the rigorous process of scouring the county for for uh, the best 30 players in the county. And as a result of that, we, we came up with a panel uh, for the Munster Championship. We went through, um, we beat Clare and Waterford in the Munster Championship and met um, our finalists, uh, Cork, in the Munster final. And I think from that day, we, we swore after that game that uh, we were going to get back to an Ireland final and, and hopefully make amends for, for a Munster Championship final that we were disappointed with how we performed. So, um, and we had Dublin then and... We Dublin and Watford in the championship rounds and then we were straight through to a semi-final where we knew we were going to be majorly up against with Galway. We were definitely underdogs going into the final, but we all love the underdog story that when they come out on top. So um, the girls' character, as John already mentioned in the second half, was phenomenal. And to be honest, we up the level of training, the intensity of training, the pressure we put the girls under. And to be fair, I think they're peaking. They're peaking now at the right time. And hopefully they'll put two good halves together against Cork in the final because that's what we need. Brilliant stuff. And that final is on this coming weekend with uh, the venue and the time to be decided. And uh, Siobhan, when you were on that road on the on the line there and working all through, it's a bit like James Woodlock, I suppose, with the Tipperary Minor Hurlers. You're building for the future of Tipperary Camogie and, and like you're, you're getting the, the players being positive about playing and, and, and really enjoying what they're doing and being the best they can be. And that's the secret, I guess, is it? I suppose it is. Um, like... We want every girl in, in, in Tipperary aspiring to be making the Tip Senior team. And to be fair, um, it's a huge honour. Like We've all experienced the honour of being of playing for a county. Um, but it's a long, long time since Tip Under-16 A team were in a, an All-Ireland final and it's about time we won one. So we're there to do nothing less than that. So it's, it's a huge honour to be there, but nobody wants to hear about runners-up, your, your first or last, as I say. So uh, we're there to do a job now and the girls are extremely focused. They're... It's an exci- a hugely exciting week, as John already mentioned. But at the end of the day, we have one job to do. Nobody, nobody really wants to remember being a runner-up in the North Ireland final. And it's a massive time for the girls. It's, it, it's as John said already, it's the biggest Kabogi sporting day in their lives so far. And we have a 
really strong uh, panel with, with strength and depth now that we've discovered in the last um, in, in the last few months and um, hopefully now they'll get their just rewards with real hard work again Sunday and a really, really positive attitude. Great stuff. John, you're steeped in GAA. I know from uh, being involved with you during your time as Upper Church Senior Hurling Manager and uh, like you've had a, a great innings. Your, your brother Mick was there when Tip won the Hurling All-Ireland in 2016 and uh, like you played with Tipperary Hurlers yourself and are involved in management for many years. Uh, and I know you've abseiled down uh, Crow Park, down the side of Crow Park, uh, you know, to raise funds for a really worthy cause back a few years ago as well. Like, so so this is your life and this is uh, fantastic. And uh, like I mentioned that abseil and tell us a little about that one briefly. Yeah, um, Dad, my, my father got a motor neuron back some, some years ago. He was diagnosed with it and... Um, in fairness, they're, they're an incredible organization. The, the support that they gave uh, dad and 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 mom um, and and us and and you know they they really really deserve every bit of support that they, we can give them back. So we got an opportunity to do um, to do a fundraiser. We were given um, a choice, and um, at the time Michael was involved with the, the senior team. And one of them was to abseil from the, the top of the stand in, in Crow Park. So for us as a family, it was a no-brainer. We, we, we just, like, being involved, being in Crow Park, Michael was there. Um, Dad would have given his whole life to GAA and was often in Crow Park. It just seemed like the right thing to do. So we we started off with, with um, you know, we, we, you know, we, we had a, an idea that if we could raise maybe four or five, six thousand euro, we would um, we would be very happy, you know, and, and it would be a, a fine donation to give. But as it happened, we got we got such support; it was, it was incredible. I think we, I think we, over doubled that amount, that target, and um, you know we're very thankful to everybody that helped, um, not just on the day, but you know their, their support and all through the time when while Dad was was ill, but. The day itself was was great because we we you get trained to to abseil, you know. So you go through a training process. It's not just a case of turning up and getting a rope and lipping off the top of the stand, you know. Yeah, there is a bit a few protocols involved. So you you, you get trained up, and um, I was a bit nervous for Mam. She was she was you know she she's not as young as she was, and um, but in fairness to her, she she um, she just embraced it and did it and um at the top if you ever look at at the video the, you'll see the two of us hanging there you know and we had a bit of a, a a bit of a laugh about it you know we were both hanging there before we started to come down she says to me um i'll race you down you know, which, which we had a bit of a fun about it but look in, in fairness like the the um motor neuron anything they they, they get they, they deserve because they, they really give it back in spades Brilliant stuff. And uh, and John, that's like that's part of it, I suppose, for you being in Crow Park. Um, you've had great days out there following tip teams and you took over the Tipperary Camogie team, the under 16s and getting them to an All-Ireland final and giving them one of the one of the great days to look forward to in their lives. I mean, that uh, that must be huge for you and up there with uh, a lot of great successes. Yeah, it's always great to be to be involved um, in teams. I think it's it's great to be involved, but to get a team to an All Ireland final is is a little is, is very special. You know, it's not something that will happen unless, of course, you're a Brian Cody. You know, and I'm not Brian Cody, but you know, we we get a chance like this, we have to embrace it. You know, because we never know when we'll, we'll ever get back there again. You know, and to be involved, but I mean, it's not just us. It's not just me and Siobhan and Tomas and, and John Fitzgerald. That's only one aspect of it. Like for us to to go and achieve this, there was a lot of other people that needed to be involved and were involved from time to time. Maybe not as as much as what we were. But you take the the parents. I mean, there, there's parents driving maybe an hour, an hour and a half to have their child at training at half six on a, on a Monday and Thursday evening and, and something at the weekend. And they're doing that three times a week, you know, and, and like without the parents 
getting involved as much. And I know you'll do it for your own children, but they all have other kids and they all have other jobs and they all have other stuff to do. But we've never had a complaint that, you know, this is, this is going on a long time. There's a lot involved. Never once. Um, they just embrace it. And without, without those people supporting us, um, we, we can't do this. We can't. We will not be in the position we're in. And there's also other things like, in fairness, there's clubs that have supported us. Um, you know, um, we've got Belly Cattle pitch there. Um, um, and thanks very much to them and the club for that. We, we got um, McCarkey pitch when we were stuck. We needed pitches and it was, pitches were hard to get uh, during the year, especially the early part of the year. My own club have been outstanding. Upper Church Drum Band. You know, they have given us the pitch. They have given us equipment. They have given us whatever we needed. And also the county board. Um, you know, we cannot function without the support of a county board. The county board is willing to support you um, that have structures in place for us that will give us whatever we, we need. And it's not just us, Stephen. It, it's, it's a combined effort of a lot of people. But yes, it's, for me personally, it's up there one of the the, the best um, sporting occasions for me in, in my time. It's great to have a bunch of young girls that are eager to learn. They, they want to train. They're hungry for success. You know, they want to proceed. They want to go to the next step now. They want to go to the minors next year. A lot of those will go to the minors. And, you know, very shortly after that, there will be a couple of them that will just go into the senior team. They're a very committed bunch. Their parents are very committed. And I couldn't speak highly enough. But there is a big family there. There is a lot of unity and there is a lot of people behind this. As I say, it's not just us. And I'm sure Siobhan will agree. Siobhan? Yeah, definitely, 100%. I've been overwhelmed in the last uh, couple of months with the support we've been getting, especially, as John mentioned, from the parents. It's just been phenomenal. And like we have an, an example of, it's, it's, a, it's a huge weekend for my Rovers. Um, Ava Dolan has been on a standing um, back for us. And I think it's the first time, if I, I stand to be corrected, but it's the first time her club have somebody in an All-Ireland Camogie final. Um, so it, from, from my Rovers up as far as, Kiloran McDonough's, uh, Kiladang and the, the real North Tip clubs, we have the whole length and breadth of the county of support and it's just been phenomenal. I, I like we had there was a lot of uh, tears of joy last Sunday when we had won because we weren't expected to win and um I was there struggling to find to figure out who's who who was who congratulating us after the match and, and actually saying thanks. But I'd put it back on the parents straight away because we without the parent support and all the club support we're getting we would not be in this position right now because at the end of the day, the first people to encourage the girls were the club coaches, were their parents, were their family members. So we're, we are nothing without them. So we'd ask everyone again to rally all their clubs and get every family member out there as well on Sunday to shout us on wherever the match is. Yeah, and it's such a healthy pastime being involved in a, a camogie team and then to get to that level where you're achieving the, and being the best you can be. Yeah, hundred percent. Like we we have the age group where I think it's thirty five percent of girls between the ages of eleven and seventeen give up sport uh, fully, give up competitive sport fully. So we were very mindful of that from the very start of the year that they are under sixteen. We have one member of the panel who's still only under, he was still only fourteen, not turned 50, 15 yet. Um, so there has to be a huge fun element too, a fun yet obviously an intense level with the training as well, but. I think that's definitely what we've brought out of them as well. They realise that competitive sport can be fun. And I think when they're playing with that level of expression, it's shown. And, and they're coming to train with a smile on their face. They're leaving train with a smile on their face. And definitely this week, I think that the smiles are even wider. And we hope they're at their widest next Sunday evening. Oh, it sounds like a fantastic setup there. And uh, just looking back at that game, you had some really good players in that. Uh, Lucy Purcell was a name that cropped up a good bit. Sarah Corcoran at centre back, Danielle Ryan, Quiva Stakelam. Um, but I suppose you, you can't single one or two out, but at the same time, um, you need that team, everybody performing and everyone with the right uh with the right mindset, John. We we've been very lucky, um, Stephen, because yeah, there, there is some some um some some outstanding players there. But the, the a team is only uh the sum of the individuals. You know, we, we, we cannot we cannot depend on just one individual. We need 
at this stage we need 20 we're play, playing a panel and we have a lot of characters strong characters in our team and it's not the same people that are standing up every day we have we have different people that have had you know come to the fore every day you know they they, they had a uh, Great game the first day, may not have had as good a game the second day, but came back again. But it's been, we've had a big spread of individuals that have stepped up to the plate at different times when we need them. They're a very, very strong, united bunch. They, they work very hard for each other. They, um, they you know, there, there will be individuals and there will be, and some individuals, some of their performances will tip the balance for us. But on the whole, it, it's a combined effort, and it has to be a combined effort, because if we if we don't work as a unit, as a team, we're a hardworking team. We're a hardworking unit, and we always said to them, "Work great, work great, work great." That is the thing we said to them first and last, and they've bought into it. And without that, we we don't we don't work, obviously. But with that, the individuals can actually go on um, any given day and can pull something out. And that that will tip us over. And we had that last week. We made some of the some of the changes. The subs came in. They got crucial scores for us, you know. And and that is it. And they're quite happy. They were just quite happy to come in and do their bit, you know. Even though and I said it earlier that one of the girls was, was dropped from the day before. She came on. She got her scores, and you know she had a superb attitude, even after getting the news that she wouldn't be starting. All the way through to when she got the call to come in with 10 or 15 minutes to go, her attitude never changed. She was going in there. She had a job to do. She knew what she had to do. She went in and she did it. And we got her victory and we moved on. Brilliant stuff. I believe Ali Kelly came on, hit 1-1 one, one from play. Yeah. Huge contribution. And Ava Beavens, uh, daughter of Maria and Mikey Beavens, who is now uh, the tip senior hurling coach, she came on and made a big contribution as well. And we're going to see some of the highlights of uh, that semi-final victory over Galway. So here it is, the All-Ireland semi-final win where Tipperary beat Galway. Galway are there in numbers too. Out comes from centre-back Sarah Corkin. Tries to get into the hand. Has it now on the second attempt. Sarah Corkin tr driving forward, trying to get her forward going. Strikes oh, great strike by Sarah Corkin. Oh. Score! From centre-back and all the way through to the 45 and puts it over to reduce the lead to two points. But... Uh, this MC gave us a high challenge. Another chance for Sarah Cochran. Drops it in again. This time a bit longer. Looks and good. over the bar. Over, over the black spot, as they say. Quiva Callan with the ball striking in into space, but it's the tip cornerback who's out Ethan in front. Melrick. Subs Ethan. going forward. One by Sarah Cochran. This is better play by Tip. Tip doing all the attack in this half. Through to Daniel Ryan. Daniel Ryan, chance for the lead. A serious point by Daniel Ryan. Oh, now, great. Tipperary need to get going here at the op opposite end. Here goes Lucy Persson, Turles Arches. On she goes, solar on true. She's been met by a Galway player. She jigs past and takes a shot. So this is oh, a lovely what score. A point. Brilliant score, Philly. So Tip go into the lead. Nine points to 1-5. Line ball into Tip. Well gathered by Ava Beavens. She turns back, lovely pass. And it looks to... Uh, look at the strike! Oh! Did it go in? Yes, it did! Goal. goal! Goal for Tip. Uh, two substitutes combined in Ava Beavens and Ali O'Kelly. Ali O'Kelly uh, with the finish. Just like the Monster final, uh, Sub's making an impact here. They're out. Galway are out. Number there. If Tip can get it, but it's Galway who'll come out with it again. Hey, hey! And there we have it, the final whistle. And Tipperary are into their first All Ireland final in many years. Uh, with a win against Galway, a crucial goal by Ali O'Kelly, I suppose, was the was the, was, the, was the big thing at the end. And uh, Galway won eight, Tipperary won twelve. Huge and excitement there in the last few minutes. A low score in the second half, Philly, but it just score, yeah. it came alive there with the with the last couple of scores there. And Tipperary would be absolutely delighted here. Oh. Three or four point victory, one twelve to one eight, and a place in the All Ireland final. Ah, oh, great stuff there, and Geraldine Canan and Philly Ryan there on commentary for that game. And uh, Siobhan, we could just see the impact there that uh, Ava Beavens and Ali O'Kelly made, and some of the clearances there by Sarah Cochran 
phenomenal. So the subs made a big impact and a lovely style of hurling as well, Siobhan. Yeah, to be fair, um, we brought on subs in the backs as well and, and they set the tone for the second half. They came out in front, took the risky chance to come out in front because if it went behind them, there was clear space in front of our, our young goalie, Danielle. So um, I think the backs set the tone for the second half and I think it was a ripple effect around the team then. Um, as John already mentioned, this isn't a team of individuals. It's a team of, of, of girls who are working um, really, really hard for each other and any of the scores you saw there were a collective team effort. So... We have drilled it into them from the start of the year. The girl that got the hook, the block, the turnover in is is going to get the plaudits as much as the girl that finishes the job up in the forward line. So it's it's work rate, work rate, hard work, hard work. And it's it's been drilled in. And the girls know, looking ahead to the weekend, that, yeah, there might be individual excellent performances, but it has to be the collective effort. It has to be, it's the it's the winning the rocks. It's it's the, hand, the little hot passes, the player running off your shoulder. It's all the small things become the big things. On any given day, so the girls know it's it's those little extra beads of sweat that they um, sweat for each other is what comes together cumulatively to win any match. So it's just they have to up it another gear again. So like we've been drilling into them all year as well that there's another gear in them, there's another gear in them, and um, I think you know we're hoping that they really reach their absolute peak of potential now on on Sunday and actually just unleash their potential because it it, it won't be good enough to be. In patchy form against Cork, yes, they'll have their purple patches and Tip will have their purple patches. But it's during those phases of the game that the girls have to work really hard, stick with their players, mark tight, force the turnovers, keep the pressure on Cork. And from that um, and the impact the subs can make again, um, there's no doubt Like the attitude has been phenomenal. It's really, really coming to a four now. And the attitude, we couldn't have asked for better last Sunday. We could have got in, as John said, with the heads down, being a point down after playing with a kind of a cross field diagonal wind um, at our backs, we came out and I think just the tone was set from the first ball. We won, we got the first three scores unanswered in the second half. Our corner backs, our full back line were driving out with the ball, setting up scores. And, and then when we unleashed the really hungry subs onto the, onto the pitch, they, they worked really well with those girls that were just energised by their, by their input from the bench. So, uh, as a collective effort, it, we couldn't have asked for more, but we will ask for more again Sunday, and hopefully the, it will reap rewards. Yeah, John, uh, like the the team is playing with a lovely style, running game down the field into space, and uh, like skill is to the fore there without a doubt. When I know when you're involved, that's the case. But they they're really they're really powerful. That team, they're really good. Yeah, they are. They're they're, they're actually they're a well balanced team. You know, we have some some um, incredibly good good players, good hurlers, good good camogie players. You know, they, they have a, a great skill level, but it's their intelligence um, as much off the ball as on the ball that that defines this team a little bit. You know, they're they're looking to to run off the shoulder, and this is something that you can only coach to an extent, but they have it. They have it that themselves. It's inherent in them. They're, they're, they're looking for that ball. You can see um, one of the balls, I think Sarah Corcoran got it there in the clip, and she she had um, Paula Quirk just running through the middle, popped the pass to her, Paula put the ball in, and I think we, we, we got a, a point out, we got a score out of it. Daniel Ryan got, got, a, got a point out of it. That, that is something that, that you can set up the coaching drills, but they need to, in the heat of battle, be able to make these decisions themselves. And we give them that latitude. To, to go and be themselves. Because if they're not being themselves, if they're trying to play to a structure, they're thinking about the structure. They're not thinking about the game or what they can do or what they can bring to the game. So they have latitude to go and be themselves on the game. Yes, they have certain things that they need to do. They have to mark their, their marker and you know they, they have to cover off. But when we're in possession, they can go forward. And that's what we're looking for. And that's what we'll create... The openings for us for other other girls that may be better to score some girls better to defend or some girls better at taking frees you know they all have a, a strong characteristic but it's to get the most out of them and in order to have the most out of them, and and she wanted to lose to it earlier about having fun you know you have to have fun you have to enjoy what you're doing but you also have to have a bit of freedom and we give them that freedom that when they want to move forward like sarah corkin came up there for beautiful point uh, from play Sarah will do that all day long, you know, and she will do it and she knows when to do it. And But that's on Sarah. It's not on us. She makes that decision 
when she sees the the open field in front of her, she can go. She knows she can go. We tell her, go, Sarah, go, you're, you can do it. You know, but she ultimately makes the decision. We can't make the decision on the sideline. But that is where we are with this this team. They will all do that. And they're all they all learn from each other and say, Well, you know, Sarah Corkin can do it. Lucy Purcell went up and did it. You know, um that's what we need. And and that's what we have from, from these players. They're they're very intelligent bunch, they work hard, and um we can't ask anymore. It's a little like uh, James Woodlock's minor hurlers this year. They're of a similar age, they got to the All Ireland final, kept going, showed that heart, showed that spirit that your team has been shown there. And there's a lot of links between uh, Camogie and hurling. We've seen it like, I mean, to look at the tip championship, Frankie McGrath is the Lockmore manager. His daughter, Aoife, plays with the tip senior Camogie team. Like, there's a lot of links there, and it's brilliant to see a tip team going to the fore, and I mentioned Mikey Beavins, Ava's dad there as well. He's involved with the hurling team. There's so many connections between the Camogie team and the hurling team. Yeah, there, there is. There's lots of connections um, all, all the way through. And, and uh, you know, w- without the connections, you know what I mean? They, they, it, it's it's um, a tradition, it, and that's and that's what it is. It's, it's coming from our proud Tipperary tradition. And these girls are part of this, and they're creating their own little bit of bit of history. But it's it's coming it's coming from from a tradition like that. Most of these young girls are coming from from homes that have had parents involved. Uh, some of them maybe at intercounty. You said Mikey Beavens, um, maybe the, the the highest one of the highest profile um, GA people at the minute. You know, from from other other parents that that. The mothers and dads played camogie and hurling with their club. But it doesn't matter where or what level they were at. It's the fact that they were they're coming from a GA household, and they're coming from a traditional Tipperary household where you know they're out with their with their hurleys. And you'll see girls and boys now. They're all out with their hurleys and bang against the wall, or they're walking down the street. They have their the hurley in the hand, and that is tradition. That that is what is. I don't know, ingrained in us. Like that's what I grew up with. That's what you grew up in Siobhan. You know, we, we were grew up in the GA family. And and that's what it is. And these girls are no different. It's coming from the parents again, that the, the parents are encouraging them. And you know, that, that's where that's where I think it's going from. Yeah, and you have the hurling and football in tip, you know. Can you see really bright days ahead, even just looking a few years ahead for the tip senior camogie team as well as the hurling team like that you know that that the ga in the county is kind of rising all all the time now and you you kind of have to stay going like that to to stay to the forefront this this is i think this is is can be the beginning of a great time for for temporary camogie the, these girls are, are very committed and their families and parents are very committed but there, there is a group ahead of us and, and two groups ahead of us, like the, the minors. There, there's a very good minor team um, there this year. Um, the, the, the senior team, okay, may not hit the heights that they wanted, but there's still the nucleus of a very good team is there. When you have girls like our under-16s and minors feeding into that group, I can, I'd be very surprised, Stephen, that if in a few years' time, four or five years' time, that Tip Camogie um, will be right back at, at the top again. You know, they're not far off the top, but they're just not quite there this year. They've been in the semi finals the last couple of years. But in order for any team, any senior team, to develop and improve and, and be competitive, you have to have um, a feed through. You have to have people coming through all the time. And now, getting into the final, we've nothing won yet. Let me state that. And we were very aware that we have nothing won yet. We're in an Ireland final, which is great. But we have no silverware. We've nothing won yet. But we we park that aside. We still have a, we still have girls that have gotten to an All Ireland final. They're in an All Ireland final now, and that is a help. They will take that with them. Whatever happens Sunday, they will take that with them. A lot of them onto minor, and that again will feed onto the senior team. And it'll bring, they have a, they'll have a winning mentality, you know. They, they, they will want this. They have a taste of what it's like for a build-up to an All-Ireland final now. 
they'll have a taste of what it's like on the David All Ireland final. That sort of taste you want again and again and again. And I think these young girls now will drive it on. And I think with with you know proper structures and they are in place now in fairness with, with the county board. And it's not just the county board, it has to come through the clubs because without the clubs um you know training these and coaching these young girls and getting them ready to come into a, another 16. I mean, there's 14, 15, 16 at the minute. Without that structure from the club and through the development, we don't get to where we are to, you know, for, for this Sunday. We, we depend on those. And in turn, the senior team then depends on us and people like us doing our job to get the 16s ready to go into minor and for the minors then to go into the, the senior team. You know, it's, it's a conveyor belt. I think our conveyor belt is fairly full at the minute. And I think it's looking good, excuse me, for Tip Camogie going forward. Great stuff, John. And uh, Siobhan, you mentioned the fall-off rate uh, amongst teenagers that are playing the game. And uh, this team, like the structures are in place with John there, John Fitzgerald as well in the backroom team, Tomas Gleeson as well involved with you in uh, the setup there. And these girls have a lot of positive role models from across the years there, be it you know, with the hurlers going out to cool camps, the camogie players that have been stars of the game, like Sarah Friday and like uh, Orla O'Dwyer, who is just another huge role model for the girls, Siobhan. Yeah, absolutely. To be fair, in Ireland at the moment, uh, the girls don't have to look beyond girls themselves to get huge role models in their local community. You mentioned Orla O'Dwyer, like a professional athlete at the top of her game. And... uh, I, I just remember a story after the game last Sunday, Paula Quirk very excitedly came up to me and said, Siobhan, two people are after asking me for my autograph, for her autograph, Paula's autograph, and Paula's vice captain. And I said, Paula, embrace that because they are special moments. And that's what we want. We want the youngsters younger than Paula aspiring to be the Paula Quirks, the Sophie Mars and the Sarah Corcorans and um, the girls ahead of them. They're, they have been role models definitely 100%. And... The minors, win- the minor boys winning, the under seventeen boys winning as well has been a huge lift, and the girls are of the same age, um, maybe a year, a year younger than, but Joy has been a huge lift for them, t- for everyone to see them pulling through and, and uh, winning an Ireland final. So, the girls, to be fair, at the moment are flooded with fantastic role models within their own communities, at county level and uh, provincial level, and then all Ireland and even international level like all or Dwyer. So. Yeah, that's definitely, it's, it, we wouldn't be doing our job right if those girls weren't aspiring to, to push on and get the absolute best out of themselves and, and become, and go on to the next level to bring to Brary Camogie forward. Like we had, I think, I, I stand corrected, John, eight dual players this year. And yes. we had girls on Munster hockey teams, um, Tipperary soccer teams. Like we, one of the girls on the panel was on three Tipperary teams this year um, to the highest level. So um, we, we were encouraging that this year because there's transferable skills between all sports. Uh, but we had to facilitate that, so it was good. John was it was excellent with the management of other other sports as well to liaise with them because we want to get the best out of girls. We don't want to burn out girls, and we don't want girls resenting the fact if they go to another training session. We want them coming and embrace and training, and, and as a result, that they're fresh for each sport they play. And now their focus, hundred percent, this week has been on 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 uh, getting that title because, as John said, we've no title at all. There's no silver on the table yet for Tipperary Camogie this year, so. We have to push on and, and win that title. So definitely the role models are around them. Um, but in, in turn, uh, these girls will be role models for younger girls in their clubs and in the county as well, because we've under 15 development squads. We've, there's under 14 development squads. Grania O'Leary is spearheading massive development in, in, in the county as well. So um, it's definitely looking bright um, and hopefully we'll get the, the fruits of, of all the hard work that's been put in. Yeah, John, isn't it such a good feel good factor from Rachel Blackmore to Orlo O'Dwyer to a Tipperary Camogie team now in a in an All Ireland final? Yeah, it is. It's always it's always great to be in a final, you know. It, it, you know, and even even through any of our own careers, like you know, when you start at the beginning of the year, it's not what you want to do. You want you want to get into to a final, you know. And we have said to to guards at the beginning of this year, we're here we're here to to get into an All Ireland final, win an All Ireland final. And it hasn't changed. And we, we, you know, from from the very first trial we had in early January in in Ballycahill, and it was a, a mucky, um, dark day. We still emphasised to those sixty odd girls or seventy girls who were there, you know, that whichever of you thirty comes through, we're still looking to to win an All Ireland final. It might not look like it today, and 
I can assure you it didn't look like it that day, but it it, it looks like it at the minute. You know, it looks good at the minute, but but that's it. You know, you, you have to come through dark days, um, and like the the, the monster final defeat was was in one of our our finest moments. But you know, we learned from it, and we will move on from it. But ultimately, we we're getting to the All Ireland final. We're in the All Ireland final, and you know that's where we wanted to be. At the start of the year, we're there. So now, you know, just finish out the job. Cork are formidable opponents as well, like and uh, that tradition of Tip and Cork goes way back to your own playing days, and you know we've seen how strong the Cork Camogie team have been at senior level the last few years. So it's going to be a big test now uh, in this final, and uh, I suppose as you said, they have to embrace this and and uh, and run with it. These are the days of your life. These are the days of your life. These these are the special days. These are the days that you look back on. You know, like, um, you know, when you when you achieve something or win something with a team, you know, uh, especially at my age now, when, when I look back at, at stuff um, that I did maybe 30, 20, 30, 40 years ago, you know, you, you still look back with fond memories and, and you still have the friends, you know, with, you still have th- those group of people that you, you, you went through the mill with, you know, to, to achieve something. They're still your friends. They're lifelong friends, you know. Cork are a very, very formidable team. They're very strong. They're, 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 they're you know, a good, good side. You know, plenty of Hurling. They have, they have good balance, and you know, they obviously will be favourites going in on on Sunday, and and that's fair enough. They, 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 pieces in the monster final. They, they deserve that tag. But in saying that, we're not one bit, um, we're not one bit afraid of the challenge, and neither are the girls. Um, we will embrace that, and as you say, it's it's one of those moments in your life that you will cherish and look back on, and we'll have fun memories going going forward. And maybe uh, just put in a little little one there, Stephen. You've done it yourself. We have now adopted the sand trap as our recovery hub, and um, after after these games, we started going there, and it's been it's been great on on a number of of levels. The one is good for the recovery, as you know yourself from your own playing days. Get down into the sand trap and get get the water flowing over the legs. But when you take thirty girls there, there's obviously a bit of fun attached to it as well with with the recovery. And we've had we've had some great. It's actually acting as as a bonding session for us. But I'm sure you had some fun memories yourself down there with with teams and a bit of fun. And, but we've adopted that now in the last couple of times, and it's it's worked well for us. Brilliant stuff. The crack sounds good, Siobhan, within a good spirit in the setup. Yeah, it's absolutely phenomenal, really. Um, that was one thing we were very conscious of. We needed to really unify this bunch because a team that trains hard together, they're, they're friends on and off the pitch. They have each other's backs. So we've, we've really got that into them now and it, they're really showing there's unity there. They look out for each other. Um, like we got positive comments from each girl about each girl on the panel and it was overwhelming to read them like the girls have such massive respect and unity amongst themselves and there's massive friendship there and if that friendship is deep they have each other's backs on the pitch and they're absolutely showing it um uh, i just say Stephen, on, on the sand trap note it was a sight for sore eyes when when the half john got into the water there um <laughs> in the sand trap the water levels are low before he got in and they were lower when he got in um, but no, the, the girls, to be honest, there's no harm in, in the girls seeing a different side to us as well because they're used to me uh, doing an awful lot of shouting and trying to get the best out of them. And at the end of the day, we're human as well. I think one of the one of the real unifying things as well that uh, we haven't mentioned so far was on the way home from Dublin. Um, DJ Lucy Purcell had a, a massive speaker on the bus and there was serious dancing and singing done. Now, we knew we had nothing, we had nothing won. We still don't have anything won. But again, it was... Uh, it, it, it allowed the girls to see a different side to us and uh, get our vocal cords in check. But it just it was a bit lighthearted and the long journey home was very was very much shortened by the enjoyment and girls that were normally you know, it, it allows the shyer girls, the quieter girls a chance to realize that you know what it's okay just to be themselves and there's an absolute place for everybody in the team. So as a result we have we've thirty different personalities and four different personalities on the sideline, but you know, we're gelling together really well and I think it's coming to absolute prime time now for that expression to be shown in a final. Yeah, it sounds like you have a great spirit there and that is the key ingredient, Siobhan. Yeah, the spirit I think is coming from um, uh, we don't set out to have a, a, comed- a comedic training session but there's so many characters on the team that 
Um, and so many ways they can interpret things I say. I can only account for myself, but um, we have characters who like a sense of crack. And I think it's vital at this age that they enjoy what they're doing. And obviously, uh, as, as coaches and as, as mentors, our job is to make the environment really conducive to the girls thriving. It's not our job to to turn them off sport, to turn them off playing for their county. Our job is to nurture, uh, to nurture them, to aspire to really high things in Tipperary Camogie. And I think we're getting it right at this stage now in terms of the environment for, for the girls. And they're creating that themselves as well. So as a result, there's huge spirit amongst the bunch. And I've no doubt, again, um, we're going to feed off that from each other on Sunday. Um, we're feeding off the spirit of parents that are supporting us in the clubs as well. So, yes, there's huge spirit there. And I think any of the successful teams um, in any codes down through the years, including the All Ireland there at the weekend, um, there's huge spirit being shown by teams. And I, and I think that that's the spirit that carries you through in the tougher moments in games when your back is to the wall. So, the spirit has been encouraging them, but the girls themselves have been the ones to draw it out of each other. And we've just been facilitating that. Great stuff. And uh, John, you're hoping that the, the wider tip public will come out and get behind this team and believe in this team. Yeah, that, obviously, you know, we, we want to support on, on, on Sunday as much support as we can get and we would have really appreciate it. I don't think we're going to we're, we're going to, to suffer with, with, with lack of numbers. Um, from what I'm hearing already, um, people are, are contacting me, you know, where is the game on? Uh, does a bus come in from this club and does the bus come in from that club? And they all want to come and support their own. They're in all Ireland final. They, everybody knows how special it is to, to get to an all Ireland final. And um, yeah, look, we, I don't think, you know, temporary people uh, as a rule, they will support their own, you know, and um, we will we will have the support on, on Sunday, I have no doubt. And, you know, in fairness, anyone that's, that's looking at this or listening to it later on, please give us the support. Give the girls your support. They have worked very, very hard um, and I don't think you'll be disappointed by how they will perform. Win, lose or draw, I don't think you'll be disappointed in how they will play. We've heard Brian Cody talk about that team spirit and how important that was in his dressing rooms and heard Liam Sheedy talking about the the week of an All-Ireland final is one of the best you'll have and uh, like John, you've you've been at hurling matches, you know, and, and playing and uh, involved with Camogie teams as well. And uh, like All Ireland final is really special. So this week is one that um, just is huge in these girls' lives and everyone that, that will follow them and support them. And, uh, and hopefully all that Tipperary public will feel that as well. And this week is, is, is incredible. Yeah, this is a special week in, in anybody's life. Anytime you get to any All Ireland final, it's, it's a special week because it's, it's a. There, there's it's a different week because there's build up to it. I mean, even even to be doing the, this podcast, you know, that's different for us. That wouldn't be that didn't happen last week, you know, or any other weeks before any of the matches. So yes, it is, you know, and people that you, I mean, I've had people coming up to me that I, I thought would wouldn't ever have known that I was involved with the, the Camogie saying, you know, well done last week, and you know, best luck in the final, you know, and you know, people realize that, it may, and that makes it special. Week it, it's it's the people make the week you know because you know without doing anything in this life you, you know you have to have people you just can't do it on your own and, and that's what makes it more special when you have people you know and wanting to share and wishing you the best and then you have say the, the other things to build up you know the last training session you know that's that's a very special training session you know the the, the on Thursday night that we'll have our last training session you know and you know this group possibly will never be together again. You know what I mean? Because, you know, for one reason or another, somebody won't make the minor panel next year, two years' time. It might be an injury or they may have gone away to a different school or gone to a college or whatever, you know, for whatever reason. You know, so it, it is a very special week, you know. Be, but they will be united. They will all be united in this because they're part of this bunch. And this, for them, will be a, a lifelong thing because they will have friends for life out of it. But yeah, it's it's a very special week. Brilliant stuff. And uh, Siobhan, we'll leave you the final word. There's players involved here from Mile Rovers to Shannon Rovers. So you're going right across Tipperary, either side of the shore. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, there's a very strong panel here covering, as I said already, the length and breadth of the county. And we just appeal to, to every club um, to get behind their players. They're already doing it um, and get the colours back up again 
some colours were taken down after the minor boys. So I'd, I'd say get the colours back up again. And and uh, the girls are really, they'll feed off the support they're getting. They're already doing that. Um, they're thriving in this week. And as John said, Thursday night will be a special a special night because as we've mentioned, you know, this bunch will be together for one year realistically and then others will, will progress on. But right now we're living in the moment and, and the moment is facing into an Ireland final. So um, we'd say definitely thanks for all the support so far. Thanks a million for even doing this podcast to be, we 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 met on Monday night to have the arduous job to, to pick a team. It took us uh, more time than we thought, hours and hours it took us, but it was great. The first thing I acknowledged was that it was great to be on it. Uh, the week before in Ireland final to be picking a team for the Ireland final as opposed to um, being disappointed about the what ifs. Um, but we're all thriving in, in this week, in this build up to the final and we want to thank everyone for their support so far and let's push it on one more gear now and make sure we bring back the title to Tipperary. Brilliant stuff. Siobhan Ryan, coach and selector and John Ryan, Tipperary under 16 Camogie team manager. Very best of luck in the All-Ireland final. I can't wait like all the other blue and gold supporters around Tipperary. Best of luck in it. Thanks, Stephen.